Hello, welcome to A-Level Tech. If this is your first time, I hope you enjoy the video. If you decide you like it, subscribe, hit the like button. It'll be good for everybody. Okay, now moving on. This is a little bit of a dive into 156, which is on brakes, entirely on brakes. So a few of you and your groups are probably gonna be diving into a little bit of the brake work. Not very heavy into the theory, but mostly working with brakes, bleeding brakes, taking things apart, putting them back together, whether it's um, brake pads, rotors, calipers, or if it is drum brakes with wheel cylinders. This episode happens to be on calipers and wheel cylinders. And what we used to do back in the day was we didn't just find one, ah, oh, it's bad, send it back as a core, get a new one. We actually rebuilt them. So to further understand how they work, we're actually going to take one apart. Not necessarily have time to rebuild it per se, but actually see how it does work. All groups are going to be expected to disassemble and reassemble a brake caliper and a wheel cylinder. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's get started with the one everyone likes the most, which is a brake caliper. So what you're gonna need for the brake caliper is you're gonna need a brake caliper, a smaller honing tool, most likely a screwdriver, maybe, maybe, and some sort of pick tool. And I would advise having a piece of wood as well. You don't want to shoot the piston out and launch it across the chop. So I'd say some piece of wood, something that blocks this end, because here's what we're going to do next. We need to take this guy apart. So here are my slider pins on the side. I don't have to worry about them, but for you guys, you are going to take those apart. But I'm going to take some metered shop air. When I say metered, I don't need 120 PSI to take this piston out. I'm just, just letting you guys know. I don't need that much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pressure into the brake hose. And boom, that's enough to press the piston out. I hope you guys caught that. Now, next up, get the piece of wood out. Now, as you can see, that pushed the piston out. That should be enough to where I can actually finagle the piston. Unless it's actually seized, it should be able to wiggle the rest of the piston the west, of the, yeah, the west, west, place west. the rest of the way out. So here's what the piston looks like. Take a good look, see if there's any scoring, any sort of wear, first off, anything that you notice might cause this to lock up in the bore, because what happens is they get locked up, whether it's the bore that gets messed up by debris or sediment or contamination of the brake fluid, which we're gonna discuss in a second, or something else. Now, the two ways the brake caliper can lock up is usually um, the piston actually seizes in the bore, maybe the hose delaminates on the inside in which case it acts like a valve it holds pressure every time you hit the brake pedal that piece that delaminated folds over on itself and it actually holds the pressure even after you let off the brake pedal it just folds over on itself and holds this guy locked up or maybe the pads are locked up in the hardware themselves so they're seized in the bracket another way is maybe the slider pins are no longer sliding that's another way they can seize up. But now we need to remove the dust boot. That's not actually a seal. That is just to keep dirt and debris out. Anytime you find one that is messed up or destroyed, just know that caliper is kind of running on borrowed time. Because if debris gets in between that piston and the wall, it's game over. Yay? Nay? Hmm. There we go. Look at that. That would have been a really, really horrible video, huh? Yeah, you can take this apart, but it won't come apart. Anyway, here is the dust boot. That's the first part right on top. We're taking that out. Now, if you look on the inside, um, I'll be better if I had a, a flashlight. Just take my word for it. But you see this, this seal right here, this O-ring, that is the actual seal that holds the brake fluid in and presses up against your piston. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy out, and by the way, this seal is directional. 
And I mean directional. If you put it upside down, it acts as a sieve and brake fluid will just gush out everywhere if you put it upside down. But you'll notice it's just a square cut. If you look through the book, it actually explains how the seal actually just bends up against the piston and lets it slide, but doesn't let the brake fluid out. But this is what that guy looks like. I'm gonna put him right here. And then in the bore, I can actually tell this guy is way contaminated, has a whole bunch of gunk in it on the inside. So if I were to take this apart, the first thing I do is I clean this out. I take a ball hone. I would start to actually resurface the inside. I don't want to take too much off. You actually do use a micrometer, um, an inside micrometer, to make sure you're not without a speck. So back in the day, you actually did measure this bore as well. You didn't just put something in because there is such a thing as too much piston to wall clearance, just like in engines class. So the next thing you would do is you'd want to clean this guy out. You do not, do not, remember this, do not use brake clean. Brake clean, yes, it's okay for washing down calipers and washing down drums and stuff like that, but brake clean actually leaves a film on whatever surface you spray it on. You do not want that film on the actual pistons. It will cause things to seize up and not sit right. So use either alcohol, denatured alcohol, mineral spirits, but do not use brake clean when you're putting a brake piston back together into a caliper or reassembling one of the wheel cylinders. Now, next up, you're gonna use some nice brake fluid. You can see that this guy is already pretty well lubricated. You're gonna lubricate the seal. You're gonna place that back in gently. Make sure it's not torn. You're getting a new one. Well, you would use a new one to rebuild a caliper. You'd get pretty much everything maybe even the piston for some rebuild kits. But you're gonna put that guy back in, reverse order. Anytime you're lubricating the sealer piston, you can actually use brake assembly lube, which is meant for this, just like engine assembly lube, but it's meant to be working with brake fluid, or you can use regular brake fluid and put everything back together again. Now, that's the inner workings of a brake caliper. Not a lot going on. I'm sorry if that was like a letdown. Oh my gosh, I thought there was more to that. You're taking it apart, putting it back together, making sure you don't press the piston in the wrong way or don't get the seals lipped over the wrong way. To reinstall the dust boot, there is a special tool that goes over the dust boot because just like a wheel seal for wheel bearings and things like that, there is a metal ring in here. So you get squarely on the metal ring and you tap that in and it presses it straight in so it's not crooked and you don't break the actual dust boot. Now, moving on to a wheel cylinder. Wheel cylinders are actually fun. They're fun to rebuild because all you have to do is you take the dust boots off. So this is just a dust boot. Remember what I showed you? Pull it back for state inspection. If it's gushing fluid, replaced. Wheel cylinders usually the seals go out first. They usually don't seal um, or seized in, in the bore, not, not often. Maybe a vehicle that's been sitting for a long time, maybe out in the field or something, they'll seize, but most of the time the seals will give out before then on a wheel cylinder. But anyway, take the dust boots off, and all you do once you have this off, so let's say you got the brake line off, uh, bleeder, make sure the bleeder is not seized, make sure it does break loose before you even take it off the car. But all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thumb and push one way, and that's all there is to the piston. Take the piston out and just keep pushing through. Now you've got your seal. It's a one-way seal. Once again, if you put this guy the wrong way, it just acts like a uh, sieve. And every time you hit the brake pedal, it just gushes out brake fluid. It's only supposed to be one way. So it's supposed to go on that way, not this way. And you can actually see how it's tapered. I don't know if you can see that. It might be hard to see. A little bit of a taper. So it's tapered. Now, got a spring in here. This is a return spring. So anytime you're not hitting the brakes, it doesn't just fold in on itself. It holds tension out to the pistons. And just keep, keep pushing through till you've got everything out. Once again, really boring. It's just has a hole, actually two holes in it. One for pressure going in and the other for the bleeder. And that's all there is to it. It just disperses that hydraulic force out to the pistons when you're hitting the brake. Not a whole lot to it. Now, doing this, same thing, only you're taking one of the flex ball hones, going back and forth. You can use engine oil as long as once you're done with the ball hone, you make sure all that is 
that contaminants is taken care of, like I said, with mineral spirits, denatured alcohol, one of the two, not break clean. And then you can go for reassembly. You want a nice cross hatch, a nice home, once again, putting it back together, but they are very easy to reassemble. So you take the spring, you lubricate this guy with brake fluid or assembly lube, and you make sure that on the new seal, you don't let it cup over or lip over. You gotta be very careful with that. And slowly push that guy back into the bore. Or another way you can do it is assemble everything for one side and then slowly push it through. So this guy, I just push him through to the one side until it comes out the other way. Make sure the spring's centered and then same as the first. Take my piston and there you go. So that's all it does. When I hit the brakes, all it's doing is it's pushing out piston up against the brake shoes. That's all there is to it. And then obviously I would take the, uh, the dust boots. Oh, I ain't looking for that now. But for the dust boots, same deal. Put the dust boots back on. Make sure they're not torn. Make sure there's no debris that's getting behind them. Once you put those back on, you have everything well lubricated, you're good to go. If you're working on drums, make sure you do not press the brake pedal without the drum on. Otherwise, these pistons have nothing to stop them from pressing out. Same with a brake caliper. If you have a caliper off of the rotor and it's hanging on uh, a, you know, a wire, don't never hang a brake caliper by the brake hose. But if, let's say if it's hanging by, you know, one of the uh, brake caliper hangers, don't hit the brake pedal, you'll press that just like I did with the shop air. You'll push it straight out and you'll have a mess. You'll have a master that's empty. You'll have to re the whole entire system. You don't want to do that. Now, for the last little bit that I wanted to explain, it's very easy to rebuild these. Very easy. It's just make sure you follow the steps, no brake clean. But some of these tools that you're going to be using, these can actually go hand in hand. Why a brake caliper or why a wheel cylinder fails. Something you want to test with these little pieces of paper, these test strips, is how much copper is in the system. Because remember, on the inside of a brake line, it is copper. That copper does shed over time. If you have too much copper in the brake system, that adds to sediment and it doesn't let the brake fluid work as well. So you always want to test that because that can lead to a failure as well as having too much water in the brake fluid. Because brake fluid is hygroscopic, which means it absorbs moisture. That's why we always have the cap on top of the master because it will absorb moisture, it will have a water content after a long time. Also, if you ever have an open container of brake fluid, it is good after, I think it is six to eight weeks, chuck it, don't use it again. Because even though you have a cap on and you think it's sealed, it does absorb water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this schnazzy tool that measures through an electric current how much water is in brake fluid. And on here you can see if it's within 2%, you're okay. If not, got the battery. Hang on. <laughs> battery okay so as you can see that's on so if I'm going to test fluid okay, that's a new bottle and it's saying zero percent so that's good if I were to test one that was bad it would read up into the chart with a new bottle that was freshly just opened, we'll get that way. But that pretty much wraps up some of the things you may be doing today in the shop as far as rebuilding both wheel cylinders and brake calipers. Groups have to do both. Everyone should get a chance to do it, not just one for the whole group. Everyone should have a chance to do it. That's Mr. H for Day Level Tech. I'll see you guys next time.